Hi guys, Trevor Swenson, Through the Darkness. On to another topic today, my journey through PTSD and trauma and stressor related disorder. Obviously the complexity of PTSD manifests itself in a lot of different ways for a lot of different people as does trauma itself, even if it doesn't get to the level of, of PTSD. But I wanted to talk about the topic of trust today and how, in my experience with PTSD, my trust slate got wiped completely clean, if you will. My life, if you take a look at this diagram very quickly, if I'm the red dot on this diagram down here, my life was full of all sorts of different personalities, all sorts of different people that had, had all sorts of different roles to play in my life. And one of the things that happened to me in developing PTSD, and I've started to understand why it developed, and I wanted to explain to you my experience and, and why I came to this conclusion, and hopefully it makes some sense as you try to make sense of your lack of trust, if you will, throughout the processing of trauma or something traumatic. And when you think about trust, trust, the expectation is its greatest in those people that are either closest to you or have the most responsibility for your health and well-being, whether that be professional or or otherwise. They're, they're tends to be an assumed deep level of trust between parents and kids, between husband and wife, between significant others, between bosses and employees, between leadership at whatever level and those that they are expected to lead. There just is a unspoken level of trust that comes with whatever position it is. If you are the son, there should be a unwritten level of significant trust between you and your father. When trauma happens, especially my trauma, and again I speak to my story and my trauma, is that if the trauma happens very, very closely to a relationship that has an unwritten high level of trust that is the expectation, it's that much more damaging and that much more traumatic to deal with. And I'll give you the simple example of parental abuse being so traumatic because there's so much trust between the two parties in that relationship. And the same goes for a husband and wife and whatever other relationship you might want to compare. With that large amount of trust that is expected, when it goes south and when bad things happen and when all trust is lost, lost on one of the bigger areas of your life, especially in a traumatic way, it automatically for me was a domino effect to have this happen in my life with trust. All of these people, all of these positions, all of these friends, co-workers, they're all in my life. And when I went through PTSD, this is what happens. Your trust plate is wiped clean and you essentially have to start over. And in my healing, I'm just barely into starting to allow people back onto my slate, I like to call it my slate of trust. And obviously besides me, I want you to see very closely that there are a lot of people, including myself, that at times you think there's absolutely nobody left on the face of the planet that I can trust anymore. But I want to remind you 
that I've said in numerous videos that no matter what, no matter where your belief is in God and Christ, they love you and you are never alone. And so as you take a look at my slate that, that's been completely wiped clean, through the course of time, what ends up happening for me is that it wasn't wiped this clean, but I'm assuming that there are people listening today that have had it wiped literally this clean and that the level of trust of getting close to anybody is like zero. And for me, fortunately, I can keep a few circles, a few people on my slate, but that's a pretty empty slate and those people on that slate include my wife, include my parents and siblings, a couple of very, very close friends that you really start over. And before I get morbid, or before you think I'm going to get morbid on this, I'm really not. Because when your slate is wiped clean, what I found for myself is that the people that you allow in, you allow in very carefully and on a more highly educated level, if that makes sense. Your vetting system, because of the trauma, is a lot more fine-tuned. People's personal characteristics to the negative stand out a lot more clearly for me. I see things in people where I literally am like, no, <laughs> been down that road, that does not work for this guy at all. And there are people that I meet and run into and have in my life where I can't get enough of what they are able to offer in my healing process. So in the process of trauma, if as I looked deep and as I had literally hundreds of hours to think about it, I found myself being very, very sensitive to levels of trust. That there were people in my process that were in positions of very high levels of trust on paper that unfortunately the level of trust was eroded for me. And that's not all bad because I learned very specific things about people, not specifically people, but people in general. And we need, I need people in my life to get through this, to continue battling PTSD. And having my trust sword sharpened through the process is actually a hidden benefit that occurs. And what I have found with myself is that as I walk through this journey with PTSD, people begin to appear with very specific characteristics and start again to fill up my slate of trust after it was completely wiped clean. Now if you think of, for instance, abuse on a spousal level or a significant other level and the level of trust that is expected in a relationship like that, if that goes south for you, how can there not be an overwhelming sense of who can I trust in this world? And that is what happened to me, is that I completely cut myself off from interaction with people. I completely isolated myself. I became completely insulated. And I did not have it in me either emotionally, psychologically, mentally, to trust any longer, with the exception of that small group of people that I talked about, which included healthcare providers, which again, I'll take the opportunity, take the time to get help and to get healthcare providers involved with your unresolved trauma. They have to be trustworthy because of the laws and guidelines that they have to follow. And that needs to be a safe place for you to be able to process your trauma because I will tell you that not everybody 
that you come into contact with or have a relationship with is going to be a safe person that you can trust. And I just want you to be very aware that in my experience, as my sword was sharpened, it became a lot easier for me to recognize those qualities and characteristics, heart and action in people to start refilling my slate of relationships in my life as I walk through PTSD. I think it's a very good life lesson. It's been a good life lesson for me. And it's also given me, again, a much deeper appreciation for the smaller number of people that are deeply involved in my life. So the group gets smaller, the relationships get deeper, and it's all rooted in something that came along with PTSD with me and for me, which was complete lack of trust. Complete lack of trust of people, complete lack of trust of systems, complete lack of trust just in life. And it was very, very disheartening and crushing to process through the trust and to figure out again how to get my legs underneath me because I know I need people, I know that you need people in your life because they are healing and they are an incredible part of this life that we have to live here on this earth. I just wanted to talk about trust with you today for a bit. Thanks for tuning in. Please click subscribe. Please forward this on to somebody that might be struggling with trust, who might be struggling with PTSD or unresolved trauma. It's a very real part of my journey of battling PTSD. And I hope more than anything that it's been helpful for you. Click subscribe, hit the notification bell. I can't wait to be with you next time. Thanks for joining me.